Hey everyone, Ripley Sellers with Bob's Watches. I'm here in the studio with Justin for another episode of Vintage of the Week, where we pull aside one remarkable timepiece and share with you exactly why we love it. So, Justin, we got a classic one here, uh, but real quick first, what are you wearing? So, we're talking about uh, an Explorer today, and I, no, we're an Explorer, but I definitely got the Explorer vibes going on. I'm wearing an Air King, I'm wearing that white dial oh, Air that, King. The anti-Explorer. Yeah, it's like almost like the inverse uh, of the Explorer, which uh, I really like it. I like the way it looks, I, I love a white dial. Um, you know, and the, the black 369, it's, I think it's just a sharp looking watch and you don't see a whole lot of them. Yeah, super cool watch and super underrated dial configuration. Yeah. What do you um, got on today? Well, Goth Explorer memo, so uh, 14270. Very nice. Um, we're talking about a 1016 today, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of compare it against yeah. its uh, direct successor because they're vastly different watches. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. So, yeah, like you mentioned, we're talking about a 1016 Explorer, right? Mm -hmm. um, the quintessential classic Rolex, right? This is, uh, it's such a great watch, mm -hmm. and it seems to be, you know, all the hype over the past few years. I mean, prices have gone up like crazy. I mean, for good reason. It's a, it's a really classic, um, you know, vintage Rolex with a great look. Yeah, and it didn't used to be. It used to be one of the most budget-friendly right. vintage Rolex sports watches because there it's a classic, clean, time-only dial. But there's, you know, it's not like a chronograph or mm -hmm. there isn't even a bezel on it. It's really a lot of people call it Rolex is you know the platonic ideal of a sports watch. Yeah. It's durable, robust, highly legible. Yeah. But it's not intended for one specific sport. Although I mean, it was created to you know honor mankind's successful summit Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Explorer itself is just really supposed to be a multi-purpose, you know, go anywhere, do anything sports watch. And for a lot of people, though it wasn't the first, the 1016 is the the quintessential vintage explorer. Right. You know, you could get a 6610, quite a bit older. You're working with a previous generation of movements, but because the 1016 went from the early 60s all the way up until the end of the 80s, that is for a lot of people the vintage Rolex explorer. Right. And you know, for all intents and purposes, kind of the only one. Like you said, you can you know they have the older one, um, but this one spans so long, and after this, they went to. Very similar to like the well, modern, this, yeah, uh, very similar you know, version of what we have today. So, really, in terms of vintage explorers, this is pretty much the meat and potatoes yeah, of it. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about that. The uh, 1016 spanned the entire matte dial era. So obviously it was er when it was introduced in uh, six, about 63, uh, Rolex was using gilt dials. Uh, they later transitioned to matte dials, but then by the time it finally phased out at the you know the end of the 80s, they were off to this style here. Mm -hmm. Polished glossy surface, white gold applied markers, sapphire crystal, it lo loses those vintage traits that yes. really ground it in. They were still using tritium on the early ones, but it loses what you know a lot of people think of as a vintage. Right, all those markers that scream vintage. Um, and they did a great job with it. I love to, I mean, to me, this is a perfect example of the vintage watch and the modern equivalent update, where you can clearly tell it's the same model, it was designed after it and all that, um, yet it has, you know, all the, the modern adornments. Speaking of modern adornments, this isn't this one's original dial. This is a service dial. This is a service yeah, dial, yes. So this one, approximately 1966, so this would have been right on the very, very tail end of the gilt dial era. Uh -huh. uh, but as was the natural practice at the time, you know, moisture intrusion, dials get replaced so they can even glow again. Right. And so this one, although it has markings on the bottom, you know, the T-25 that is usually associated with tritium, it's a service dial, has Luminova, mm -hmm. glows in response to light, glows quite brightly actually, and glows yeah, yeah. bright green. And so if you really wanted a vintage Rolex that looks definitively vintage, because this one even still has its original rivet style bracelet, uh -huh. but didn't want you know, the, the baggage of maybe having delicate aged tritium loom or even just the uh, mental baggage of sure, potentially, the responsibility flooding, yeah, of potentially it, yes. flooding something you never be able to get back. This is just an eminently wearable vintage model that, you know, you could easily put it back right if anything happened to it, God forbid. Yeah, and I like that. It's, uh, you know, to me, it's like the, the vintage that you're not scared to wear, right? I mean, you can, uh, you know, you don't have to feel bad that, you know, you're, you're going to ruin this one-of-a-kind piece, yet it still is inherently vintage. It has the look. It has the matte dial. And um, I, I like the fact that it glows. Um, you know, it's there's there's pros and cons on both sides, right? I mean, the, the all-original uh, dial and, and um, you know, period correct is nice. But 
I also like the fact that it glows. I mean, I'm a sucker for Loom, and I think it's kind of cool. So I, I like the fact that it's, you know, it does have a service parts, but it still retains that vintage look. Um, it still gives you the vintage feel. But like you said, with maybe a little less worry and responsibility if it was, uh, you know, if it was like an all original safe queen or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think service dials are underrated. Yeah. Because some of them are really cool, and it almost tells its own story within, you know, right. what, what the brand Rolex or other is doing at the time. Um, but, you know, with cars, it's sort of a similar thing. Yes, is if it was all original with the original paint, original toolkit, yeah, obviously that would be preferable, but is the goal to have this museum piece or is it to have something you can actually wear? Sure. And so this one might have had dial damage or the hands might have been crumbling and it wasn't a piece you could actually wear. Right. At whatever point it was restored, it is now a completely wearable watch. Yeah. Highly functional. Beautiful. Gl yeah. Glows in the dark. Yeah. Hasn't done that in years. And what's also kind of cool is we often talk about how patina on, you know, this was once a very stark white and black watch. Mm -hmm. Now it's, you know, got pumpkin colored loom. Um, this allows you to almost go back in time yeah. a little bit because it's not, it's Luminova on there. Right. So it, it is a very, very stark it white and black watch. It still has that new bright, crispy white, black and white feel, which um, it's nice. It's different. And like you said, it's, it's new, so it doesn't have that aged feel to it. But um, it's a little bit special in terms of it's not something you see every day, right? You, you're used to seeing the patina because, you know, most of these watches have aged, you know, they've been around for 30, 40 plus years and they've uh, they've developed that patina. So to see one kind of as it came out of the, the showroom floor, um, it's kind of nice and it's kind of different. It's cool. I like the look. Yeah, and it's a matte dial because like yes. if you had a uh, early like, you know, 16800 Submariner, and with with a matte dial and flooded it, you know, modern day and sent it in for service. The movement or the dial that they're going to put into it is of the later style with applied white gold markers. Right. This is a service dial, but it's a matte dial. At a glance, it's in very very vintage aesthetic, yeah. and it even has you know the tritium signature on the bottom. Right. Probably because they had leftover dials that had, had luminous material applied. So, you know, if you aren't looking at it in the dark and yes. see that it glows, you'd be hard pressed to tell any difference except the absence of patina on it. Yeah, that is kind of, uh, that's one of the big disappointments of getting a service dial that's different. You know, say uh, it had the matte dial and they replaced it to a much more modern looking dial. Not only does it have uh, the non-original dial anymore, which may disappoint you, but it to me, more so is disappointing that now it doesn't look so vintage anymore. It looks like it has a new dial put on it. Where this one, even though it is a service dial, it still keeps those vintage traits. It still keeps that vintage look, the matte dial. Um, aside from the patina, um, you know, not being there, which, like I said, I kind of think is cool. It almost takes you back in time to uh, to a new old stock. Um, but it still has that vintage feel and the vintage look, and I love keeping that about the watch. Yeah, if you wanted a, a vintage, like a definitively vintage Rolex, you know, acrylic crystal and all that you didn't need to worry about, I'd be hard pressed to think of a better watch than this. There's yeah. nothing to go wrong on. So at a glance, immediately vintage. You got matte dial, acrylic crystal, even a rivet bracelet. Sure. But there's no bezel to get snagged on something, no bezel insert to get scratched. Because even those these days, the bezel ring for like a pre-crown guard sub is thousands of dollars. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you, you might have a service dial in it, but if you lose that part, yeah, that's right. an expensive mistake. This it's time and time only, no date, It's there's not it a is, lot yeah. to go wrong short of flooding it or dropping it, you know, right. there, it's, you know, there's nothing really to mess up. You might put a couple more scuffs on it and- Yeah, yeah. a little more character. Yeah, it's all uh, right. It's very bare bones and, you know, I mean that in a great way as it's, like you said, no date, no bezel to pop off, nothing, you know, no uh, bezel markers to get scratched and become illegible and all these things. Um, it's just very utilitarian, very simple, beautiful, and it works, and I mean, th there's a certain charm about that, and I love that. Yeah, and I mean, especially, there's a lot of watches that are, you know, time only from Rolex, the mm -hmm. Oyster Perpetua, the Air King, mm -hmm. um, but if people like the Explorer because of its capabilities, because it was that rugged timepiece that was designed to be the go anywhere, it was designed to be functional. Right. It should be functional, and having yeah. a service dial kind of plays into that whole theme yeah. versus this resplendent antique gold item where you know it's more about the artist. And the, if the, you like it because it's functional, the Explorer having a service dial isn't necessarily a deal breaker, and it's kind of a cool piece to own without you know having such a collector's item on the, yes. your wrist every single yeah, day. I agree, one hundred percent. And this one's actually for sale, right? I mean, yeah, all the watches much that we feature we're talking on about, the show. Yeah. Um, is for sale. So yeah, you can go to Bob's Watches if you're looking for a beautiful 1016 Explorer. Um, it's got a different look to it. I love that white, you know, that stark white on the dial. But yeah, if you're looking for a great example of a 1016, head over to Bob's Watches and check it out. 
Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Vintage of the Week. Gorgeous Rolex Explorer, reference 1016, and one with an interesting service style. Don't forget to join us next time for another episode, and we'll see what we have for you then.